Peace, peace, everyone. It's your girl, Sequoia Blue. Um, hope everybody's doing good on this beautiful Monday. So today, I want to talk about the writer's strike. Um, as many of you know or don't know, I am also an actress. Um, I haven't, I'm not an A-list actress or nothing like that. I've been in a lot of stuff, but I've done some plays in Atlanta, and I've done some background work, and I'm still aiming to do some more cool projects. So um, I want to talk about you know what's going on with the strike so basically what they're saying is they're not getting paid enough for what they're doing and possibly there is uh, a scare of AI taking over actors roles as far as voiceover and even just I don't know creating actors that look like actors using AI and stuff like that which could happen uh, the tech side of me you know I love I love artificial intelligence. I actually was going to do a podcast on artificial intelligence and talk about it, but um, I don't think that it should be used to mess up people's careers. I think it, it could be used for good things. I do like artificial intelligence. I love technology, but it needs to be used for, for things that's not taking advantage of people, like taking their pictures and creating another them and this and that. But we don't, you know, when you're not in charge of something, you know, things will just go the way it's going to go. And we all have to you know, be prepared for that. And that's just the bottom line. Rather you're entertainer, working at a job, whatever, things could change at the snap of a dime with technology because that's just how it is. I mean, so, you know, I saw a lot of comments on TikTok and stuff with people saying, oh, well, we're suffering too. We don't make enough at our regular jobs, stuff like this. You know, doctors need to be paid more, blah, blah. Man, everybody need to be paid more. There needs to be a strike for every field you know, doctors, nurses, all that, all of them need to be paid more, you know, but it's okay for actresses to come out and say, hey, we need to be paid more, because honestly, we don't get paid enough, you know, um, stage plays don't pay you a lot, you know, unless you're in a big major stage play, and you have to constantly be on tour with stage plays, you don't really have a break if you're trying to make that your full-time job, and that's something I just didn't want to do, I want, I like breaks, I, living comes first to me, <laughs> I love art, I love you know performing and all that but I want to live first I come first before music or you know acting anything like that so some people that's why they want to do tv and film and you know also some people feel like they're more known via tv and film versus stage plays and whatnot but the thing is if, if you're a person of color especially it's, it's even harder for you to actually get paid <laughs> you know properly you know we're you know historically underpaid you know in all fields really you know so it's 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 tough um so the fact that they are they're also strike you know boycotting too because they're like well, hey we weren't getting paid a lot anyway but now we, you know everybody's talking about it let's join because we weren't really getting paid and it's just a sad situation because we work so acting is not easy you know <laughs> people think it's easy but some roles you got to really take your soul and you got to put into it, you know, so you can look believable so people can actually understand the film, understand you, believe you as an artist. It's tough. Then they did. We do deserve to get paid more money, even the background artists, because it takes a lot of work to be on set. I've been on set for like 12 hours and, you know, and they do feed you some food. Some sets don't feed you anything. They might give you some snacks or something, but you're only getting paid like, I mean, well, my first background um, role was when I was in my early 20s only got paid like I think it was like 7.25 an hour 8 an hour or something like that but I was on set for like it's almost 16 hours and they didn't even pay any overtime because that's Georgia doesn't do that there and then it's just not as fun you know it's just it's interesting because you know you want to learn behind the scenes you want to see what's going on but it's like you can't do it every day you can't you know especially if you have a job that pays more money than that and then as time went on you know in LA you know, they're paying like, I think like well, 20, 20 an hour, 16 an hours sometimes. You know, if you're a featured extra, which they call featured extra is like somebody that's seen on camera for real, like, or you might be seen on camera, they'll pay like 25 an hour, which is pretty decent. But, you know, it's still not enough. And you still got to get picked to be a background actor. So people think that, oh, you're just walking in and you're going to get picked. No. It's a lot of people that want to do background work. Some want to do it full time. Some just do it on a side, whatever. Um, and it's a lot of people that want to do it. So you have to be picked to do it. You can't just go in and do it. And um, 
And like I said, it's if you get a job that pays more than that, it's kind of like, uh, I don't want to go, you know, I'm not going to do this. I got a job that pays more than this. What's the point of me going on back, doing background work, staying in there for 16 hours and only getting paid, you know, 16 an hour or something, but my job pays, you know, 35 an hour, you know what I mean? Something like that. And so, and the crazy thing is that in order for you to get in the union, you know, you have to be, you have to do background work until you, unless, you know, you get Taff, I think it's called Taff Harley, where they, you know, you get on set of like a show called Snowfall or something like that. And then they just give you the SAG uh, ticket. But, you know, until then <laughs> you have to do background work to earn that SAG ticket. And every, every background role doesn't give you the access to the, to the SAG voucher. It doesn't give you a point to go towards the SAG voucher. So you're at a point where you're like, okay, you know, is this worth it? You know, you don't want to be, that's why there's so many homeless people in LA. I lived in LA for five, six years, you know, and it was a lot of homeless people. I mean, I'm talking about actors that, you know, I had a studio apartment and actors want to sleep on my floor. I mean, it was tough. You know, a lot of people go there and go after their dreams, but it's, it's a lot to maintain your lifestyle in LA. And if you're someone like me that don't want to stay with a bunch of people, <laughs> you gotta work. You're gonna have to get a good job, you know, to be able to survive in LA. You know, because you wanna you wanna live while you're trying to go after your dream. Well, I would I do anyways. I can't speak for everyone else, but when I was there, I wanted to live while I was going after my dream. So those are just some of the things. And you know, and even you heard Viola Davis, and she's one of the best actresses out there. She spoke out said she's not getting paid, you know, a male street pay. You know, male male street is getting paid more than her. You know, and it it's just a crazy situation but I do think that I don't know what's going to happen with it because the way t- you know if you're not the boss like I said the bosses run the ships here rather you working at the postman post office working at wherever you work at the big boy gonna run run the show and that's the that's the freaking sauce like if you <laughs> if you want to change the game you got to become the boss and that takes time and 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 if you're a person of color you're going to get turned around and hit in the head I mean not saying it can't happen but yeah, you, you it's gonna be a little hotter, but you can do it, and um, and then you know, like I said, that's the main thing. Like the people in charge of all these streaming networks, they're the ones, the streaming channels, they're the ones that's gonna be the ones making decisions. And some people are, you know, can negotiate their contracts pretty well and get somebody that's understanding, get a good exec that wants to work with them. Like I think Issa Rae negotiated a good contract. She's, if you don't know Issa Rae, she did the show Insecure that's, that was on HBO Max, now it's streaming on Netflix, but I think she got a good contract. And then there was another young lady um, from UK. I just can't remember her name right now. I think it's Michaela. I don't know her name, but she did a show called Chewing Gum. You can research her and she actually did a contract where she can get royalties for her show and own and own her show that she had actually got a deal with on HBO Max. I think it's called uh, "I Will Destroy You," but she did. She she actually negotiated a good deal, so it kind of worked in her favor. But it doesn't always work like that for everybody. Sometimes they say no. Sometimes it doesn't work. But it worked like that for her. And I think that everybody should, if you are someone that's a creator, as far as you wrote your own shows and created your own shows, you do have more of a, I guess, say, pool than someone that's just an actor. But it's still tough either way. It's still biases and, and whatnot. But I just want to just want to jump on here and just give my side of the view. But yeah, I mean that's why you know people act like you're gonna go to LA and just make it overnight and that's it. And why you ain't there yet and all this other crap. Like, bro, <laughs> it takes a lot to just be an actor and to be able to survive and stuff like this. Like you can't just go there. And like I said, there's exceptions to the rule. You got some people that just went to the right place at the right time, but very rare that that freaking happens. So. <laughs> You know, like for the people out there that's badgering artists in the world, you know, don't ask them why they're not there yet or why they, like, if you're not putting up any money and helping them pay for their rent, then shush up because it takes a lot to be an artist. And and the people that's still doing it and striving even till they leave this earth, I give you freaking kudos that you're going after your dreams and do what you have to do. And my working class people out there, you know, and, and trying to make it, just keep fighting and keep. You know, in this world, we have to keep leveling up, unfortunately, keep training. And I'm going to do um, a show soon on podcast, like not podcasting, but my next podcast, I'm going to do a show on um, like sites where you can get some training at and stuff like that. So I'm actually going to be discussing that um, on the, I don't know which show yet. I got so many shows. So, but soon look out for that if you're interested in learning about training, additional training, so you can kind of get ahead in this world because at the end of the day, you're going to have to 
you're going to have to keep improving if you want to live a certain lifestyle. And this is not for people that just comfortable where they're at. Hey, if you're happy, then I'm happy. But for people that want a certain lifestyle and want to travel and all this, I can give you some courses that you could take to get there. And tech is taking over, guys, and it's not a bad thing. But we just, if you want to stay ahead and keep making bread, then just get ahead of tech. Not saying you have to be in tech, but let's know what's going on. Be aware and, you know, just keep going. And my artists out there, my actresses, my singers, everybody out there, keep your head up, man. It's going to get better and just start learning how to own your own. Everybody just start working together. Start your own production companies you know, become writers, write your own stuff together, you know, and, and just keep going in that way. And I think that's the best bet is to become a boss. <laughs> All right. So I just want to pop in here on this Monday morning, just discuss that real quick. And, um, everybody, you know, stay cool, stay positive. All right. Peace. <laughs>